So uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the uh, afternoon session on tri transcatheter uh, uh, mitral edge-to-edge -edge repair tier. Uh, I'm David Cohen from uh, Cardiovascular Research Foundation in St. Francis Hospital in New York, and my uh, co-moderator uh, uh, is Dr. Jung Sung Kim uh, from Korea. Yeah, from Korea. Uh, the, uh, uh, and uh, our panel, uh, we have uh, um, Ju Yung Han. Uh, we have several remote panelists. Uh, we have uh, Shunsuke Kubo, I think. Hope everybody's here. Uh, uh, Simon Lam, uh, Dr. Mimok, Dr. Morikawa. We have K.W. Park, I know. Uh, and uh, Dr. Shi Sen Hyung. Did I miss anybody? Did I get everyone? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and I'm going to give the first talk because the uh, schedule is a little bit changed from originally. Uh, because the uh, live case is not quite ready to go. So I'm going to give my talk um, on the cost effectiveness of uh, TMVR from the COAP trial. Yeah. 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 First speaker is uh, David Cohen. He will give a talk regarding cost effectiveness of TMVR mitral clip insight from the COAP trial. Cohen, please. Well, thank you very much. And uh, it's great to always be back here. Uh, and uh, now that I'm relaxed after doing our case this morning, uh, it's uh, uh, great to be able to share this uh, uh, data with you, which we presented a couple of years ago. My colleague, Dr. Suzanne Barron, actually led this, uh, led this work. Um, and this is uh, the results of her study. These are my uh, disclosures. So we know that the COAP trial is uh, really foundational in our field, and it showed that transcatheter mitral valve repair with the mitral clip resulted in both reduced mortality and heart failure hospitalizations, as well as improved quality of life compared with guideline-directed medical therapy in patients with heart failure and three to four plus secondary mitral regurgitation. Uh, however, in the United States and around the world, the mitral clip is a very expensive device. In the United States, it currently costs about $30,000. Um, and there's a pretty large population uh, that are candidates for this uh, procedure uh, with the secondary mitral regurgitation. And so we knew that it would be important for us to understand the cost effectiveness of this therapy, especially given all the advances that are going on with medical therapy for secondary mitral regurgitation. Uh, so just to remind you, uh, the COAP trial actually enrolled uh, 665 patients with heart failure and three to four plus secondary mitral regurgitation. And recall that all of these patients had to be seen by the heart team. They had to be told they were not a good candidate for cardiac surgery, although they, you know, they, they didn't have to be high risk, but they were not appropriate for cardiac surgery. And they had to be optimized on medical therapy. Uh, then 614 of these patients were randomized to mitral clip on top of GDMT or GDMT alone. And the economic study uh, that we did, this is a United States perspective analysis. We can talk about it. It actually, we've repeated this analysis in the UK, and it looks very, very similar. It's an intention to treat analysis. And what we did is we analyzed the economic data based on what we observed in the trial. So we had two years worth of observation before any patients were allowed to cross over. And then from two years on, we built a model, a statistical model, where we projected the patient level uh, survival, quality, adjusted life expectancy, and costs. Um, and obviously, we don't know really from COAPT what happens beyond two years, because at the two-year time point, patients were allowed to cross over. Um, and so we really have two years worth of randomized data, and then it's, uh, it, you know, we're not sure. And so we made several different scenarios uh, to consider. So we had a best-case scenario where we considered that the benefits we observed over the first two years would extend indefinitely for the rest of the patient's life. We also had a worst case scenario where we assumed that there was no benefit beyond two years, that after two years, basically the survival curves would be parallel. And then our third case was the in-between, which was our base case, where we assumed that the benefits didn't stop abruptly at two years, but they gradually tapered off. And then by five years, there was no further benefit. And that's kind of midway in between. And that's what we used for our base case. So not the best and not the worst. Uh, just a, a word about cost effectiveness in the United States. Um, what we measure is what's called the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, which is measured in something called dollars per quality adjusted life years. And you can see here there's, you know, a wide range of things we can see in the United States in general, a ratio of less than $50,000 per quality adjusted year of life gained is considered high value and up to about $150,000 per quality adjusted year of life gained is considered intermediate value and above that is low or poor value. And so we're going to look at, you know, really look at this $50,000 threshold and this $150,000 threshold. 
So the first piece of information that we got from the trial was how much the costs the cost of the initial hospitalization was uh, for the patients who got the MitraClip. Um, you can see here the procedure itself was about $35,000 dominated by the cost of the device. Uh, then there were additional costs for the time in the hospital and the, for the physician. So the total cost of the initial hospitalization was about $48,000, pretty high. Um, and again, most of it is the cost of the device itself. Then over the next two years, there were significant benefits. We know that from the clinical data, and here's what it was in terms of some of the economic data. And what we're looking at here is the number of, uh, of these events per 100 patients. And so you can see there was a significant reduction in the number of hospitalizations, which was basically driven by heart failure hospitalizations. There was a significant reduction in hospital days, as well as days in skilled nursing facilities and rehabilitation hospitals. And again, heart failure hospitalizations was really the key. And as a result of these reductions in resource utilization, there were cost savings after the patient left the initial hospitalization of about $12,000 per patient. Um, and you can do that math in the back of your head, or you can have me do it out for you here to understand that even though there were these cost offsets, the MitraClip didn't pay for itself. It cut the cost, so because again, remember, it cost about $47,000 during the initial hospitalization, about $12,000 worth of savings. So at the end of two years, the net cost was about $35,000 to our society or to our healthcare system. So that's the cost side of the equation. What about the benefit side of the equation? Actually, let me take this off now that I'm thinking of it. The, uh, the benefit side of the equation, uh, this is the observed data in the trial. So this is the first two years. These are survival curves. Yellow is uh, medical therapy, and the blue is the MitraClip. And you can see within the trial, there was a gain of 0 0.13 quality adjusted life years. But then when we extended those curves, again, using this projection and in our base case where we assume the benefits of the MitraClip tapered off gradually, you can see the area between these two curves is a pretty large gap. Um, and the, there was a gain in life expectancy of a little over one year and a gain in quality adjusted life expectancy of about 0 0.82 years. And that really is represented by the area between these two curves. And then when we put the costs and the quality adjusted life years together and we replicate them, um, this is our kind of our statistical process for doing cost effectiveness analysis. We get this cloud of points representing the joint uncertainty in the change in cost and the change in quality adjusted life years. You can see all of these points are in the upper right-hand quadrant, meaning we are very confident that in a 1,000 simulations, we are gaining quality-adjusted life years, but we are also increasing the cost. And you can see the numbers here. And the ratio of those two is what we call the incremental cost-effectiveness ratio, and it's about $55,000 per quality-adjusted year of life gain. So it's very close to, but not quite at that high-value threshold. Um, this line here, this green line, represents that high value threshold and the points that are below that green line tell us the probability that we are highly cost effective. Um, and then here is a threshold line of $150,000 per quality adjusted year of life gained. And you can see, again, we are very confident that we're under $150,000, but we're not nearly as confident that we are under $50,000. And this is another way of representing that same information. This is called a cost effectiveness acceptability curve, and it shows us the probability that it is cost effective at different thresholds. So if you're in a society where your resources are quite constrained, you might say there's about a 27% chance that it reaches that $50,000 per quality adjusted life year threshold. But in the United States, again, we are willing to spend substantially more than that on our health gains. Um, and at a threshold of $150,000, it's almost 100%, about a 99.8% likely that it is more cost effective than that threshold. Now, what about the other scenarios? This was our base case, the kind of that middle scenario. What about the worst case scenario? No benefit beyond the two years that we see. Even in that worst case scenario, you can see here that the cost effectiveness ratio only goes up very modestly. It's about $70,000 per quality adjusted year of life gain. So still very solidly in that intermediate range. And if we look at the threshold, our best case scenario, where we consider that the benefit might continue indefinitely, which is certainly a possibility, then here you can see that the cost effectiveness ratio is now very much in that favorable range. Almost all of it is below that green. Um, and the cost effectiveness ratio is about $27,000 per quality adjusted year of life gained. Finally, what about subgroups? We always like to look at subgroups and say, is it, you know, is this everybody benefit the same? And the answer is not everybody benefits the same. If you look at age, sex, the baseline ejection fraction or the etiology of the cardiomyopathy, you can see there are differences in the cost effectiveness ratios, but all of them are under $100,000 per quality adjusted year of life gained. And 
pretty much all of them have a high probability of being under $150,000 per quality adjusted year of life gained. So the main take home message from these subgroups is there isn't any obvious subgroups where the patients didn't benefit. And as a result, there isn't really a um, major difference in terms of the uh, cost effectiveness. It really doesn't drive the decision very much. So to summarize, for symptomatic heart failure patients with three to four plus secondary mitral regurgitation, really the COAP population who were treated with optimal medical therapy, very important. We know that TIR uh, increases quality adjusted life expectancy compared with GDMT alone at an incremental cost per quality, quality adjusted year of life gained consistent with somewhere between intermediate and high economic value depending on the US, uh, US thresholds. And this again, we've replicated in this in the UK and we have very similar findings in the UK. The, the, the gains in quality adjusted life years are very similar. The cost of the valve is a bit less or of the, of the uh, clip is a bit less. And so it all kind of comes out in the wash. Um, we certainly do need future studies to better understand the durability of TMVR benefit in this population to really resolve whether the base case is the best estimate or it's the worst case or the, the, uh, the best case. And then, obviously, as the field evolves, uh, we are going to need to think about things like whether transcatheter mitral valves, um, which offer the possibility of eliminating uh, a mitral regurgitation in some of these patients, whether they offer enough additional benefit to you know, warrant what is likely to be their additional cost. Uh, time will tell uh, with that. Uh, for now, we have the mitral clip, and you know, soon we will have uh, other therapies in the, same, uh, in the same space. And based on our data, uh, the cost effectiveness looks very reasonable. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for, yeah, David. Uh, the discussion will take place after two lectures. I think it's very insightful uh, data for the cost effectiveness of TMVR. Next lecture is uh, will be presented by Dr. Saibol Carr. He will give a talk regarding lower of transcatheter repair in moderate risk primary MR patient. Saibol, please. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very grateful to Professor Park and his colleagues to invite me to the AP Valves conference. I sincerely apologize that I could not be in person, and therefore I'm making this recording for you guys. My topic is the role of transcatheter repair in moderate risk primary MR patients. These are my conflicts of interest of importance. I'm the co-principal investigator of the repair MR trial and the expand registry. So I'll start with an example of a 75-year-old lady who's a Jehovah's Witness with mild mitral anaclassification who presents with severe mitral regurgitation. As you can see here, the patient has an isolated flail P2 with a small mitral anaclassification area. The question is, what do we do with such a patient? If you look at the ACC and AHA valvular guidelines for the interventions for patients with chronic primary MR, you can see it's a class one indication to treat patients with primary MR with surgical repair. Even with uh, patients with asymptomatic disease, provided they have signs of mild LB dysfunction, the level of evidence is B, and the level of evidence is based on non-randomized data. On the other hand, if you look at the interventions for primary patients with chronic MR, for the role of transcatheter edge to edge repair, it's only a narrow indication. It's indicated as a 2A in severely symptomatic patients, NYHA class three and four, with primary severe MR, who are high, high or prohibitive surgical risk. And it's a reasonable mitral valve anatomy for the repair person. The patient has, should have a life expectancy of at least one year. This is based on the Everest non-randomized data. Also, it's important to mention that in patients with severe MR, where the leaflet pathology is suitable for repair, performing a recent replacement should not be performed. In fact, that's a class three. Now, what exactly is moderate surgical risk patients? Now, we do know that the ACC has defined uh, a low surgical risk pa patient who has an STS score of one, or less and has no frailty and has no major organ system compromise. On the other hand, a surgical high-risk patient is considered a patient where the STS score for replacement is eight or repair is six, 
or has at least two indices of frailty or one or two organ involvements. So now you have a huge group of patients between one and eight, which are ill-defined, which we would consider probably as moderate risk. And this is the category of patients where the treatment strategies are not well-defined. Now, if you look at the treatment of mitral condition in the community, and you, this is a community where they decided to saw patients, and if you notice that patients with ejection fractions of greater than 50% or less than 50%, if they were left untreated, there was a significant mortality in this group. So therefore, we do know in reality, there's a large group of patients who are in moderate risk, who can be operated, but are not being operated. Now, what is the impact of age on isolated mitral repair? If you look at the age range and operative mortality, if you're less than 74, your operative mortality is average 1.9%. But as soon as you cross the age of 75, that mortality almost doubles. And that's the reason why this age 75 is quite a mid. And that age is a strong predictor of morbidity and mortality with an age of 75 being the key inflection point. Now, if you look at the outcomes of mitral valve surgery in the United States, this is an STS report in 2019, you will see that only 1.2% of patients had an STS score of one, or actually the other way of putting it, that 25% of patients who underwent surgical mitral repair have an STS score of greater than 1.2. That means the majority of mitral valve surgery done now in the United States are low risk patients. Now let's look at the data for transcatheter mitral valve repair, surgical repair. Now, as I, as I mentioned, that the edge to edge repair is only approved for high risk of prohibitive risk patients, which means an STS score of greater than six. We do know that over 150,000 patients have been treated worldwide. The mitral clip is currently in its fourth generation with the new features which are make it very simple. This is the contemporary mitral data on the left side compared to the original Everest II trial. If you look at the original Everest II trial data, you can see that we only achieved 53% of one plus MR at discharge and only 37% had a one plus MR at one year. Now, if you look at the contemporary data now, the expand registry for only the primary MR patients who had a baseline MR of three plus or more at baseline, and this is core lab adjudicated data, 82% of patients had one plus MR at discharge and 79% of patients had one plus MR at follow-up, suggesting that the, there's a definite improvement in mitral outcomes, which is sustained up till one year. Now, here's the data which shows the contemporary data for surgical repair. Now, this is a study uh, evaluating the role of tricuspid valve repair in patients who are undergoing surgical mitral valve repair. Now, if you look at here at 12 months and six months, you can see quite a, at least 10% of patients have moderate or moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. This is actually contemporary data, which tells you that maybe the surgical data and the latest mitral yeah. data are almost similar, at least at one year. So this leads to the repair MR trial, which is an evaluation of mitral in patients with moderate surgical risk. And the sub objective is to evaluate the role of mitral versus surgical repair in patients who have moderate surgical risk and whose valve is conducive to repair. This is going to be a large trial. About 500 patients are going to be enrolled. Professor Matt McCarthy and myself are the co-principal investigators. This is the design that we're going to take patients with symptomatic severe mitral regurgitation, grade three or grade four, or patients asymptomatic with L mild L dysfunction. And the criteria, they have to be good candidates for mitral valve repair and the subject should be at moderate surgical risk, as defined as a patient who is greater than 75 years of age, irrespective of the STS score, or if you're younger than 75, 
have an STS score of two or more or presence of one or more comorbidities, making the patient a moderate surgical risk. And the patients will be randomized one to one to mitochondrial versus surgical repair. Now, there are two core primary endpoints. The first is the clinical endpoint of all cause mortality stroke or cardiac rehospitalization or a kidney injury requiring a renal replacement therapy at two years. Um, all events between treatment and one month will be excluded. Co primary endpoints will be the proportion of patients with moderate or less degrees of MMR without the need for mitral valve replacement or without the need of a recurrent mitral valve intervention. We also have se several important uh, secondary endpoints, and the patients will be interestingly followed for the first time till 10 years. This patient was reluctant to have surgery, and ultimately the heart team uh, considered this patient to be reasonable for the mitral clip. She was 75 years old. She had some mitral animal calcification. She was a Jehovah's Witness. And they, we claim that there was a high likelihood of a significant MR reduction. So the surgical risk, of course, is in the eye of the beholder. This patient had just one XT clip and had trace MR at the end of the procedure. So if you look at mitochondria for intermediate primary MR, the goal of the study is to evaluate an alternative treatment option in the right patient population, where there's an unmet clinical need, and we think this group is an unmet clinical need, and where there's an equipoise between surgery and transcatheter repair. We did not combine echo parameters with hard clinical endpoints. We did not want to compare a, a composite endpoint of MR death or rehospitalization. And that's why we have two core primary endpoints. And for the first time, we'll have objective long-term core lab adjudicated data for both contemporary surgical repair and transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair. In conclusion, I'd like to say transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair in intermediate risk primary MR will follow the footsteps of TAVR. Repair MR is currently designed is that right trial for this indication. The patient population and the associated benefit risk will help advance patient care for moderate surgical risk patients. The randomized nature of this study is intended to increase, increase and improve the guideline support for mitral I once again, thank you very much for allowing me to make this presentation. And I apologize for not being in person at your place. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your very interesting lecture. I, I think this is a very debatable some, yeah, uh, uh, issue uh, until now for the mitral clip procedure. So we would like to go to the Taiwan okay. at first. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Ying, can you hear Dr. Ying? It looks like they're very busy. The, uh... Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, can you can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So please introduce your team and the case at first. Okay, let's uh, play play the slide. Slide. 这个国珍你拉好哈，你拉好。Do you see the slide? Yes, we can yeah, see the slide. We can see the slide. Yeah. Okay. 你整个系统。那个能不能把我 slide 把它我看不到我的字，整个系统哎往外拉。再往再拉。回秀能不能看一下我的字？再拉再拉。Okay. Let's uh, next place. 好，你停在那里。this is a 70 years old male, and he complained dyspnea on exertion and generalized edema for three months. He received the mitral valve repair and the tricuspid repair in 2018. And at the latter time, he, the repair was Edward PCO2 annealplastic stream, 30 millimeter, and the uh, MC sign for tricuspid 30 millimeter. But at the same time, the tri application of a posterior liver was down. Mm. 
and uh, he, he had a comorbidity of atrial preparation. The coin angiography showed a few days ago that the luminal irregularity. Next. Next. And uh, here we can show the transthoracic echocardiography. The mitral valve regurgitation is uh, severe, and the, the cooperation long is in the posterior. Next. And uh, the wall motion is okay. Here we can see the, the regurgitation is still severe. Next. And uh, we look further, and uh, the cooperation long is uh, uh, below the ring, about one millimeter, and uh, it's quite small of posterior defect. Next. And uh, here, about the same. Next. So that's, uh, this patient has uh, three options. is a uh, redo mitral valve replacement. The STS is 7%, and uh, the age is that's uh, around 72. The frailty is uh, zero. He live independently, but uh, the patient refused to redo operation. And uh, we have uh, two transcaster options. is a uh, transcaster mitral age to age and the uh, transcaster mitral bulb in ring replacement. Next. And uh, for the multi size CT show here, the Neo LVOT is uh, for the replacement is a uh, tip to the process is about five millimeter and the angle is 120. Next. And the Neo LVOT is 185 and the length, length of the period is 26. Next. And the cortation long is uh, about two millimeter and uh, here we can see the posterior liberator is quite small. Next. So the, the, for the puncture side, for the, the, the length of the inferior septum is 37, and the, the, the any, and puncture side to annulus is uh, 22 point, times 25. Next. This dream is uh, area 467 under the multi slide CT. The true, the IA is 470, and the CT area was 459. Next. So the, the, our case is uh, uh, intermediate at the VLT is 180, and the failed mitral valve repair and the severe mitral recreation. So that's, uh, today's point is uh, uh, mitral valve edge to edge repair or the mitral valve in, in dream. It's our, our, our patient, is there any problem about uh, could we do the mitral clip or the mitral valve in brain? So the, uh, anybody have, uh, and it, lo it looks like you're planning to do a valve and ring uh, as best we can tell. Yeah. Does anybody want to do this with a mitral clip? I, I would need a, to see a, t a TE to try to understand that posterior leaflet and see if it's even graspable. I don't know okay. if, but, uh, that it's graspable. Uh, the Dr. Xiong for explaining the TE. Dr. Xiong. All right. Uh, okay, let's see the, the echo. We just did about uh, uh, 30, <laughs> about an hour ago. This is the longest view. As you can see, the patient had a previous uh, mitral valve repair before. And this is the ring and this is uh, the aorta. As you can see, you only can see the long, the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet. Uh, I barely see it, just a little, uh, very short of the posterior leaflet. So basically on the, this longest view, I don't think this is a good case for mm mitral clip, so probably there's no posterior leaflet to grip. Well, we, I can show you the 3, uh, 3D is more easier. Now, um, the color showed a pretty significant mitral digitation. Uh, also, this view showed the, the jet go all the way back to the, to the left atrium, the, the posterior wall, the, it's the eccentric jet. Now, let's go to the, let's see the 3D. Okay, this is the unfast view of the mitral valve. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can see the aorta, unfast view, this is the aorta, aorta valve right here. 
And this is the unfast view of the mit uh, of the mitral valve, the rings right here. As you can see, the only the anterior leaflet see, only the posterior leaflet barely is right here. It's not moving at all. So let me turn around, looking from the uh, from the LV side. So this is the anterior leaflet. I barely see the posterior leaflet. Probably only a, a little things right here. Probably mm -hmm. to the posterior leaflet. So I don't think it's a good case for for mitral clip. Oh, and, uh, okay. Let me see. Let me show you the colors of this uh, 3D. This is the unfast view of the 3D. So you can see it's uh, almost uh, it's a very severe mitral registration right here. Then, then anybody want to uh, anybody want to uh, clip this? Shall we stop here? You want to discuss this, or I just want to yeah. Go, I, go, I, I, I'm going to ask the panel and and any of our virtual panelists as well. Does anybody want to clip this at all? I don't see a lot of people raising their hands uh, to try to clip this. I, I, I there is no. I, I think your description is exactly right. There's no posterior leaflet there. Yeah. Um. There's nothing to clip. Yeah. But but if if posterior plays enough length, then what what is the first choice? Clip or just a bad replacement? I think this is. I mean, is if, the, if the leaflet was repairable? Yeah. I don't know. Let's ask around. Yeah. The, uh, ask again. Yeah. Uh, what what you, is your opinion? We, we got that the very very good length of the posterior leaflet and the valve well, analysis is okay. I would do the metal clip first. The, uh, any other thoughts? So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I mean, I think if it's, if it's clippable. Yeah. It's nice to clip, yeah, first, yeah. but because I mean, you don't have to do the lampoon, you don't have to worry about the LVOT. There's a lot of things that that it takes out of play, mm. um, but that's not not in this case. I don't think. Yeah, it's clippable if the posterior leaflet length is uh, uh, adequate. But I think uh, the patient surgical risk is not so high, so we should uh, consider the redo. Right. Unfortunately, before it sounded like the patient did not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be that, before right? clipping, yeah. medically. Yeah. The uh, need. The, uh, so I think we have a, a number of votes for uh, letting you guys do a, a valve and valve uh, here, to the, uh, which is what your plan is, I think. So do you want to talk to us a little bit about your plan, uh, a, a little bit more? I think it went by fairly quickly there. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So what what is your what is your plan if if it's not clippable? It's, uh... I, I think, uh, do you think that uh, do we need uh, the lapin procedure for the, I think uh, the neo is 180, and uh, the patient refused the, the, the redo surgery because he said that the previous operation is uh, quite, quite stressed, so that uh, he, he, he would like to do the, the valve in ring. And uh, initially, the patient was uh, delimited for the the clip procedure. However, the after evaluation, uh, the, we think that uh, we should do the mic. So do you have lots of experience with the lampoon procedure? I have not done any. Um, yeah. And uh, we, uh, others around uh, the room? Our third case for the lampoon procedure. Because as a... Uh, for the, the anterior with dip is 26 millimeter, and uh, we we plan to do the the lapin procedure, and uh, it, maybe that's a weekend procedure. Like uh, do any of our panelists and uh, uh, virtual panelists have much experience with lampoon? No, so we're going to learn from you the, uh, uh, to see how it's done. The, uh, uh, the, the, maybe as a, we, we been just, nice. uh, put in a, a pacemaker and uh, now as a, whether five minutes or as a, we, we have the, the expand the lapper procedure. Uh, just, just, just wait a moment. That sounds good. Yeah. The, uh, was there some comment from the, uh, um, our virtual panelists? And I just wonder if that feasible to clip the anterior leaf to, to, to the posterior ring. I don't know. Does anybody have experience with that? I mean, I think everything can be tried. Yeah. I just, I mean, it's hard enough to clip to when you have a calcified posterior leaflet. Clipping onto a ring sounds really hard. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's, it has yeah, been cast report. The, uh, 
So, would, I mean, is there anybody, you know, who's, you know, ha has more experience with, you know, the, again, how much valve and ring have you done? So, you know, we've all done many valve and valves, yeah. mitral valve and valves, which is a really nice procedure. As we know, ring, valve and ring is trickier. Yes, so, our okay, brain is a uh, transeptal mitral valve and ring. So that's, uh, we just uh, did a transeptal procedure and uh, the the lapum procedure. Now, now that uh, we we put in the uh, the pacemaker sheets, so we can now we can extend the uh, the lapum procedure. 等一下，你让他们看，因为现在很干。不是，我要看那个你，你先来，那个那那个全是套。So because this this patient is a a paper preparation, so we implant the 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 sentinel brain protection device first, and then now I we. Do the transeptal procedure is around the inferior posterior septum. Next, and uh, that's uh, because uh, we we think that uh, deep deep cordae might be trapped in in the uh, A one or A three. So that uh, we use the uh, shuang gans to to guide the 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 catheter just uh, into the P2 because as, uh, when you do the rapun procedure, sometimes you will cut nut in the middle of the deep data so that uh, we use the uh, uh, balloon to, uh, balloon to, to, to aim at the P2 area. Next. So what kind of guiding catheter? Shuangkens catheter. Yeah, what's the guide though? Is that an agilis the sheath? Agilis, yes. Agilis sheath. Okay. Agilis, yeah. yeah. And then now, now we, we insert the acetal wire and we pull out, nail out externalization. Next. So it is some, some, it, it takes time because uh, when you snare the acetal, it's quite difficult. Next. 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 It, it, it's down like a cutting as well. Okay, that's, uh, this is prepared for the, the, the cutting. And uh, now we, we ask the echoman to check the, the case uh, is protect the RT valve and uh, the, the Y is uh, just uh, in the middle way of the uh, anterior liberator. So you, you have there, so you have an estato wire all the way across? Everything? Yes, that is the acetal wire. Yep, and then yes. you and that's a, J, a JR four, the catheter on the on the uh, exterior, the exteriorized wire. What what catheter it's is that? Uh, Alta Alta side is uh, multi-purpose. Multi-purpose. Okay. Yeah, four is uh, in the atrium side. Next, so we cut for times and uh, make sure that the the liver was liver that was uh, cut, and uh, next. Okay, that's a place that's a echo cardiography with very short before and after. Like a, ah. oh yeah. So you've ah. already you've already done the the uh, the basil, the uh, lampoon, lampoon. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. That the, uh, we we explain the T finding after the the lapun procedure. Okay. Mm. Then before. Before. Yeah. All right. There are lots of. Uh, uh, recording so to find it. Mm. Um, okay, let's see this one. This is uh, just to see the caster goes through the atrial septum and go into the pathetic mitral valve. And then uh, I'm, I'm happy to find some, something interesting. And then just uh, um, the 3D. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, the the caster is going through. I, I mean, right in the middle of the uh, anterior mitral leaflet to, to do the procedure right. And this is the uh, true view. Then, uh, let's see. Mm, this view, we can see the caster, uh, it's already uh, in the middle of the anterior leaflet, probably uh, close to the A2 uh, part. And this is the, the true view, as you can see. It's right here. The ring's right here, and the, the caster goes through this uh, uh, A2 part. And uh, then this uh, 
the duty and during the procedure, the lapone procedures. At the same time, they're doing the procedures and also inject the the glucose water, so inside mm. the uh, the left ventricles. And then this is uh, let me show you the last part. And this is the after the uh, the the plume, and then the MR become very severe. So this I think is a uh, it's a it's a successful procedure. So next uh, procedures you should be put the new valve in the old valves. Do you have a view of the t 3D on this to see the slice? Can you see it? This one? After after the lampoon? Do you have, with the with the after the lampoon? Oh, sure. Um, let's see. If you can see the the. Uh, know, if not, it's okay. Afterwards, so uh, yeah, this one. Hmm. So you can see those in two leaves for this. Uh, so, so, so already separate this mm -hmm. part. Yeah, no, you can see, see it very nicely. Here, yeah, here. that's great. Yeah, yeah, right here, right in the middle. Yeah, very <laughs> short color. Color. The color, not not yet. I don't have okay. time to record. I can record now. Okay. <laughs> the is the pa did, did the patient have any hemodynamic problems with that increase in the mitral regurgitation? I, I think that the hemodynamic is uh, blood pressure is around a little bit lower, and uh, it's around seventy, and then and I think they just add some inotropic. Um, However, that's a uh, relative oh, small and the low pulmonary edema. And uh, this patient initially is the severe mitral regurgitation, so that uh, did not change too much. Right. Yeah. Good to know. Mm. So we now now can you see the we just uh, did the cytostomy, and uh, this is a twenty millimeter balloon. After cytostomy, we we all partial inflate the balloon and uh, see that the uh, if. We, Stepping going into the rim or receptor is okay. So it's uh, our daily practice for the mitral valve in bubble or mitral valve in rim. Do you always use a 20? That's a big balloon. Does everybody else, does everybody use a 20 for these? No, no, it's 12. 12. 12. Oh, I yeah. saw you said 20. Okay. 12. Yeah, not 20. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it's a uh, septum is uh, too thick as uh, we use 16. And uh, sometimes you need the uh, NGR tester for the the operation, the, the septum, and the, make a small hole and then add everything into the left atrium. Is there anyone have question about the lapin procedure? And I think it's, I mean, it's obviously, a, you know, a, a great useful procedure for yeah. these. And I, I think it's going to be something we get more and more of as we get more transcatheter mitral valves that are, you know, meant for that purpose. We're going to need to be better at lampoon like you guys are. Yeah, I think that uh, for lapoon procedure is quite easy when you use the transeptal procedure, because uh, the every time you use the transeptal, that's a you so-called a retrograde lapoon procedure. And the original version is a uh, anti-grade lapoon is from two one two cases from our artic size. Uh, I think it's much difficult to do the the anti-gray lapin procedure. However, for retrograde one version, it's okay. So during, for, for this procedure, what kind of wire are usually recommended? Uh, it's always use the uh, acetal because uh, the acetal, acetal is uh, the deep wire and uh, is a uh, bare metal outside. Uh, mm. It did not have any other coating. So that uh, you just protect the wire from the cut the arty valve. Do you make a flying V like we do for Basilica, or you don't have to make a V? Sorry? Do you, for the Basilica procedure, we make a V yeah. in the in the Estado wire. But for this, do you make a V, or do you use it just straight? I use it, I will use it just straight, did not use V. Okay. However, uh, when you use V, that's, uh, the case got easy rules because uh, V sometimes is stuck in the case and mm. uh, cause some problem. And uh, when you advance, or snare outer externalization of the wire. And so now you have, is that a safari wire that's in the, uh, or a confida? What is that? Yes, uh, so we always use the safari wire in the apex. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Yin, could you pr explain the, what, what do you do? Okay, I'm just pushing the bar system. 
你要打还是我？ Into the 你你弄前面没关系。Oh. Into the environment cover, and I will assemble the system later. So the key when doing any of these uh, mitral valve in ring or valve and valve procedures is making sure your transeptal is nice and low. That's mm. uh, if you don't yeah. have it low, it can be very hard to get into the left ventricle. But if, this yeah. looks like a nice low one. Mm. So uh, now we assemble the valve. valve the, the, make sure that the the schist is uh, below the, the uh, in the IVC area. So this time that the E phase face down is very important because uh, without E face down, sometimes uh, the when you angle the the caster is uh, rotate to another way. Okay, okay, then. Hmm. This is locked. Hmm. And this this valve is a uh, um. You know, it's reversed compared to the way we put in a uh, uh, you know, a, a uh, aortic valve. The the uh, because uh, this valve is, uh, uh, this ring is a uh, physio 2. So it's a saddle shape and the semi ridge complete ring. It should be a very perfect mm. ring for mitral in ring, uh, mitral valve in ring. Procedure. Okay. Because uh, we have done a bench testing and this ring can be fully can be fully uh, dilated as a circular shape. So you can turn it into a circle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a usually almost a circle. Mm. It's nice to have a, a complete ring. It's it's much worse yeah. without a with an incomplete ring. Mm. Yeah, in my my center, as a after the vital valve injury, we always suggest the surgeon use the complete ring, but not the the the, the bend. Pull back a little. Uh, for mitral in ring, usually it's a uh, uh, seven to three ratio of deployment with uh, arterial side, maybe three or four millimeter would be an optimal result. Yeah. So, so we start our test run. And this okay. is, you said you added two cc's to this 26, is that right? Yes, yeah. it's, uh, it's around 27 because uh, the, the ID is around, the rim, yeah, it's around two, 20, 25, so that the, the, the oversize is around 20% for this case. Great. Passing okay. on. Okay, okay. Test, test. okay. 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 Stop. Stop okay. patient. Stop patient. That's a small trick. To use test round to make sure that the uh, ring is uh, in, a, in, in a line. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone satisfies this, this position or there's a more bench core or more atrium. I think there is still some room to adjust maybe. So maybe we should pull back a little more at atria because it, it is easier to push in the mm -hmm. all the, the LV instead of pull back to the LA. And plus your, oh, your, your, we your valve is not, uh, here. you know, your, va your valve is not agree perfect, with that? perpendicular. I think that's good. Anybody okay. think okay. differently? What, what angle floral do you use for? I mean, this is, yeah. Ready? The, I can't tell where they are. The, uh, it's pretty severe <laughs> what, what, though. What angle for this, this projection? Okay, right. we will deploy the valve now. Oh. Okay. Okay. Push a little. Push. Other push. 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 Don't push. Yeah. 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 Nice position. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. The uh, so I think you know the. Only in LV, it ended. We saw so how we uh, very we slow, very slide a little bit. Blood pressure Maybe. and I think it's the blood pressure. Level fade, please. Uh, to have a more set, 
satisfactory result. They need to delay the LV side a little. You want it to be flared into the LV so it yeah, doesn't yeah. to make it as a cone cone shape. Mm -hmm. Can't see the blood pressure. Is the blood pressure okay now? It's yeah, gradually uh, improved. Gradually uh, increase. Yeah. It's sixty right now. No, okay. We wait the blood pressure come back to maybe seventy or eighty. I mean the important thing. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I think the important thing here is how slowly and carefully they deployed that valve. You really take your time to make sure it's in the right position, and they adjusted it several times, as you could see while they were. Okay, uh, okay. It. okay. okay. Looks like it's in a good, very good position. Okay. Okay, we're in the wide position. Okay. 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 Okay, I'll move a second. Okay, very good. You have to okay. have to eat your Wheaties in the morning to get that. I think there is a small waste there, so yeah. the anchoring should be secure. So that uh, we remove the case that uh, said that the TE check the position and the, the, the parallel kitchen. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, you guys see now? Why so that? Okay, Dr. Show, please yes. see the, the echo. Show us the result. Ooh, nice. Okay, so this is the, the after the valve will put it in. You can see, well, I think it's a very nice, yeah, mm -hmm. minimal MR, a uh, little bit power, a little bit. Yeah, there has been right no here. gradient at all. Yes, so I think it's good. More or less, the Lapun uh, is work. He's working very well. Could could you check the pressure gradient of the LVOT? LVOT. Oh, okay. Oh. LVOT yeah, gradient. Yeah. All right, I have to go to the transgastric. All right, right here. As you can see, the valve is open in a conical shape. So I think the risk of migration is very small. Yeah, I think that's you know the key there is the deploying it mostly in the ventricle and then flaring it yeah, out like yeah, you did. Yeah. And the uh, atrial uh, side maybe four millimeter also. Yeah. So. Remove no gradients all at all. Yeah. Mm. Wow. We will remove the delivery system. Oh. Yeah. There. And please see the atrial uh, hmm? Septostomy, please have oh, a look right on here. that. Oh, we are time. No. Okay. There's more. Personal. They are left to right. So. I think we don't need to do anything there. The, I mean, yeah, I think I mean most of the time with the, just the twelve, uh, these these seal up by themselves. And that's that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a great you know, yeah. it's great, great, great result. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think a really nice uh, demonstration of uh, you know how well you can te you know do a valve and ring these days. Uh, Everybody has uh, really, you know, mastered a lot of the techniques. I think the lampoon, as as we talked about, is going to be something uh, that is useful, and hopefully, we'll get, um, you know, maybe some dedicated devices that will help us do that even easier. Um, obviously, the the electric cautery works pretty well, though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, can I now quite... Yeah, maybe you can see that for this patient, I think TIA is not a uh, good option because the posterior has uh, almost nothing to grasp. So we decide to uh, use uh, mitral in ring. Actually, in such a patient of young age, uh, we, in the first place, we recommend the patient to undergo surgery. But I think the heart, heart team is, is really important. Actually, the uh, first choice should be the surgery. But the family and the, the patient discuss, and the, we have a shared decision making, and the final final decision is uh, mitral in urine. 
Dr. Uh, Dr. Lee, uh, I have a question. Uh, um, question here? Uh, how, so, would you, how would you uh, follow uh, up this the uh, Professor Wei is here. Uh, make, maybe he can make a comment on the decision process and yeah. uh, the final, uh, how to get a consensus of the family and the patient. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching our live demo. This is uh, Dr. Cohen and Dr. Kim. Thank you for uh, moderating this uh, session. Uh, I would like to uh, to say that uh, well, that the uh, LV OT obstruction is a, a major issue after the so-called valve ring implantation. So uh, the Lempu the Lempu procedure is quite uh, looks like uh, very easy for our team, but I think. Uh, uh, some uh, anybody of you can do that uh, in the future. So that is a it will be a common practice for the uh, for us to do the so-called mitral uh, valve in ring. Uh, so this is a I, I think this is a, a very uh, important for us to know how to do that. Yeah, Thank so, you for watching for this. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. we we really appreciate uh, your showing us uh, your expertise in this uh, uh, wonderful procedure. Um, if we we do have a few more minutes, so if if you're able, we 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 can take uh, questions from the panel. I think KW, did you? Yeah, yeah. My question was uh, how how you how do you follow up these patients in terms of doing imaging, uh, and also uh, what's the antithrombotic uh, regimen after you uh, put one of these in? Well, as the surgical valve, antithrombotic will be uh, treated as a surgical indication. Because uh, the flow in the mitral position is uh, slower than the arterial side. And actually, it is reported that the valve degeneration and the valve thrombosis seem to be, uh, instance seem to be higher in the mitral uh, valve in valve or valve in ring procedure. So we will give the patient anticoagulant. Uh, this patient has uh, chronic atrial fib, so it's not a, a difficult decision to make that. We will keep the INR around two to three uh, to make sure nothing happened. It makes makes good sense. I think. I mean, the, the, almost all these patients have AFib, which makes the decision uh, much much simpler. I think uh, for for us. Any um, again from our virtual panelists uh, abroad? Any questions at all? Uh, did you check the uh, hemodynamic before procedure and after procedure? So LV pressure and LV pressure. <laughs> uh, we have just taken out the system. Sorry for that. But actually, uh, Dr. Shong, can you show the gradient uh, of the valve after the procedure? I mean, it has so to be better. But, uh, yeah. gradient. <laughs> but it's oh, all... It's good. Sure. The... Uh, yeah, across the mitral valve. Across the mitral valve? Yeah. Mitral valve, sure. Oh, I just uh, record here. It's right here. Uh, it's seven, pick seven, the mean three. Okay. Yeah. So, pick seven, mean three. Mean three. Should be fine. Yeah, in, in this case, we, we tend to not to use the 29 valve because uh, from the AP's uh, recommendation, maybe there's a 26, 29 borderline case. That's, uh, however, when you use the 29, the, the problem first is uh, LVOT is uh, relatively small. And uh, sometimes uh, when the 29 valve is not fully open, it causes some long-term degeneration or got easier thrombosis. So we choose the 26 and the oversize for, for 2cc. Yeah, yeah, the I think point that's... is really important because uh, 29 valves are mu much longer than the 26. So it will push the valve further into the LVOT, carry a higher risk of LVOTO. So I think it was a very a good decision all around for the 26 with the, with two two extra CCs to uh, uh, yeah. to anchor it in. I think that was great. Yeah. Um, the are there any other comments uh, at all? Otherwise, we are getting ready to go to our uh, second live case. And again, I just want to thank uh, thank you so much for a really excellent demonstration. Uh, your skill and uh, judgment is was impeccable, and you made it look uh, very easy. Now we all want to go home and do one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Too many of them. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your great case. Thank you, Thank you. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the uh, live case to La Asam Medical Center. Dr. Kang, can you hear us? Oh uh, yes, I can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Could you could you could you introduce your team and case at first? Uh, yes. Thank you for joining and uh, 
joining the AP Verb 2022 and uh, the great moderator and panelist in work here and all over the world. I will introduce my team. I'm Do Yung Gang from Asa Medical Center, and he is the, the International Fellow Mohamed Gosadi from Saudi Arabia, and Dr. Aran Kim, uh, our Senior Fellow, and Dr. Dei Kim, our Echo Imaging Specialist, will uh, be the, the join our procedure. And Dr. Nam, the, our cardiac anesthesiologist, is on uh, charge of the anesthesia. And Dr. Kim, can you please introduce our case? Okay. Uh, our patient is 82 years old female with who was admitted for worsening dyspnea, myocardial association class 3. She had a history of asthma and atrial fibrillation and hyperlipidemia. The echocardiography showed severe mitral regurgitation due to flame motion of anterior medial and lateral segment with caudal rupture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, please. Uh, the patient's STS score is 5.8, which is intermediate risk, and her medication included rivaroxaban, digoxin, isoprolol, phenolactone, uh, and uh, IV latex after hospitalization. Next, please. The echocardiography showed normal LV systolic function and severe uh, MR, and moderate functional TR was combined. And TE showed prolapse of medial commissure on post leaflet and rupture tore and combined functional MR. Next, please. The chest X ray showed cardiomegaly with pulmonary congestion, and EKG showed atrial fibrillation. The echocardiography showed severe MR. Yes, the 82 year old female patient with a severe dyspnea. And he had a history of atrial fibrillation, and echo showed the severe mitral regurgitation. And Professor Kim, can you please show us the, the great T images for this patient? Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Dae Kim from Asam Medical Center. Can you see echo image right now? Yeah, we can see. Yeah, this really, is yeah. a mid esophageal view. Every function looks good. And uh, this is commissural view, a uh, deeper probe insertion modifies it. And then you can clearly see medial commissural prolapse right here. It, this is a magnified view. In color flow image, you can clearly see big picture right here mm -hmm. and uh, multiple jet from the uh, commissural prolapse. The pigeon radius uh, was 15 millimeter, Oof. indicating <laughs> severe mitral regurgitation. Uh, in pipeline view, we are checking from medial to lateral uh, severely. Uh, in this view, you can clearly see uh, sufficient posterior leaflet and the big coarptation gap. The cap, the gap, um, gap is a seven, seven point five millimeter. And right here, the big coarptation and sufficient posterior leaflet length. Yeah, this is a big picture, vena contract and distal deaths are indicating severe MR in this biplane view. This is a 3D image. Uh, you can clearly see uh, medial commissural prolapse and uh, definite quarter object here. Yeah, the color flow, the frame rate uh, to low uh, to left death rate, uh, you can clearly see a uh, big uh, mitral regulation here and uh, some uh, functional limit. Uh, mitral regurgitation. Uh, please uh, believe it, uh, whole jet is a uh, functional MR. There is some artifact from uh, this image. Okay, but in uh, mid uh, biplane view, you can some coarptation gap uh, indicating uh, some functional MR here. This is a uh, jet from the commissioner. Some functional MR in the central region. In, this patient uh, had uh, atrial fibrillation for a long time, a huge dilation of left atrium. Uh, left row formal band uh, shows uh, definite uh, systole levers are here. Uh, right left upper formal band uh, also shows uh, mm -hmm. definite uh, formal band levers. Uh, uh, we checked this, uh, for the stroke volume in uh, deep gastric view. Uh, the, there is a limitation, the reptile and the atrial fibrillation. The big one uh, shows the forward stroke volume, the only uh, 13 uh, millimeter. Uh, we initially tried the first puncture, was the septal puncture height was uh, 4.2 centimeter. I think we are uh, slightly lower for medial commissure lesion. We already checking 3D relationship between uh, puncture site and uh, mitral commissure. 
you can see uh, the puncture site is positively located from the mitral annulus. Yeah. Before the, the... We tried the second yeah. puncture. Yeah, yeah, yeah 4.3. And 4.8, uh, uh, finally, we achieved the uh, optimal height for medial commissure region. Yes, the location is optimal for the procedure. Thank you very much. Yes, this is where we are. The 82-year-old female with a severe commissure primary MR with some atrial functional segment at the, at the, uh, the mid middle person. And because of the old age of this her uh, old age of the patient, we decided to perform the transcartage to actually repair for this high risk uh, for this old patient. And dear moderator and panels, do you have any question or comment of the selection of the treatment strategy for this patient? Oh yeah, I think this is a very challenging case. Yeah, for the uh, yes, mixed yeah. uh, pathology. So, is there any recommendation from the panelists? Hi, I'm, I'm Takao from uh, Okayama, Japan. So I think, uh, so you guys mentioned th this is a commercial case, but I, I, I don't think this is a commercial case because the commercial case is supposed to be the horizontal jet, right? And this patient, the MR jet is going to the posterior side. So this, I yeah, think but this uh, is it depends on the involvement of the posterior leaflet, but the mm -hmm. P3 uh, involved a uh, severe, the jet direction usually uh, horizontal, but in patient, it depends on the uh, the dependent uh, uh, involved leaflet. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Anatomical, you are right. So, I'm sorry. So, um, so, so, um, in my plan, I, I I'm going with a wide clip, NP or NP double or XT double to like to in the medi medial side. That should be fine. But the cortical is seven point five meter in in the far commissural region, but posterior length is yeah. uh, sufficient. But but mm -hmm. how about uh, low XT clip uh, initially? But we, um, it, it was we discussed a lot about uh, the clipping strategy for this patient. As mm -hmm. you recommended, why the clip would be a very good option. And uh, but the one thing we should regarding is the NT would be a little bit short to catch the whole uh, cut of commissural gaps. So uh, in a very long time of discussion between Dr. <laughs> Kim and me. And we uh, selected actually XT clip as the first uh, first weapon uh, to cover the commissural uh, region, mm -hmm. and our plan is to close more medial uh, remnant regions with a wider clip, and uh, it's, a, it's our original strategy. <laughs> is your is your posterior le how long is your posterior leaflet? What is the length? Uh, 15. Yeah, 15. Okay, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Gang, this is Dr. Han yeah. from Samsung Medical Center. Uh, yes. yeah. uh, I would like to start to be the NTW for the medial MR. Yeah, yeah but the coptation is relatively uh, yeah. big, bigger for an anti clip. Yeah. How do you think about the problem? Uh, I agree with uh, Takao and Dr. Gang. I, I, I will, I, uh, this is Kubo from Japan. Uh, I will use uh, XTW for the medial commissure. Mm -hmm. So I think the uh, medial, uh, both the S3, P3 perhaps can be covered by XTW. And I will add the uh, one more NT for uh, the uh, central functional MR. If the, the, uh, uh, if, if the gradient uh, did not inc increase. <clears throat> the belly barrier is six square centimeter. It's yeah. very sufficient, mm. sufficient belly barrier uh, for these patients. Okay, I, I think that the, the selection of the clips and the strategy is very difficult way, and there is no uh, uniform equation uh, <laughs> because every panels and every masters of the the mitral clips says different things. So this is this is what, what we experience on the daily practice. Uh, for this patient, uh, can you move? Uh, I tried to puncture the uh, posterior side, and at first puncture, the puncture height, as the Dr. Kim showed, was 4.4 centimeter. Uh, because of the medial commissural region, I thought it was a little bit low. So we did a second puncture with a height of 4.8 centimeter from the mitral valve annulus to puncture side. And next, and we introduced the next. Uh, next. Next, and we introduced the steroid guiding catheter. And actually, we 
uh, already selected the XT, mm -hmm. and now I'm going in. Uh, I begin my procedure. Can you please show the tip of the capstar? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Echo where shows yeah, the tip of the SGC. Capstar. Uh, yeah, okay. In. That's good. Yeah. So which do you have an XT or XTW? XT. 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 Yeah, we selected the XT. Okay. So, oh, but yeah, always we, we have a con have a, some concern about this some um, coda entrapment with a, a large yeah, grid. Yeah. So I think we have to yeah do the procedure the cautiously. Kubo can do it with the XW, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not so, I'm not so experienced. So I selected the XT. Please forgive me. Okay. No, I think if you if you clip it right uh, and and you're lucky, the the result might be very good and might be a very very uh, significant reduction in MR yep. okay. with yeah, just right. XT. Okay, I'm going to um, medially M dive with echo monitoring. Can you please show? By the way, yeah, okay. Here. Yeah. Air 좀 줄여주세요. 불러주죠. There's some air. Mm. Too much air. And I'm sorry, I just I didn't quite uh, get the, the plan. So are you planning to use two clips? Is that your your plan? Is yes, I'm planning to use two clips. So you're two gonna go at the medial. Med medial yeah. first, and then and then then lateral. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we'll see what right. happened in the lateral the functional segment. Yeah. We we'll clip the first the medial totally with medial first segment. Great. Okay. So I uh, is in decreasing. Uh, we waited a long time <laughs> here. Okay. Let's see a little bit more, and we are going to commissure. Okay, the position is good. Can you please show where we are? Okay. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. I think we are near the commissure. Yeah. I will go a little bit laterally. Okay. How about the, the location? I will go a little bit down. Can you see? Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, we can see. Force reduction. Let me M dive. Let me show the, the trajectory. trajectory. Yeah. A little yeah, okay. bit M dive. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I will release the M and move a little bit anteriorly and we'll check the trajectory again. How about here? Oh, it's still uh, M dive, I think. Still yes. M dive. Okay. Personally, I like uh, to give the much more RAO view mm. to make to to see the the P flow right next to. This means that uh, you you uh, it makes okay, you can, can you make it easier to the trajectory. I mean the RAO like this. Uh, no, sorry, like RAO. RAO, RAO, RAO. So just overlap the two, to, yeah, to clip. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. Okay, how about but, this angle? Yeah, but still and dive. Still medial dive. Okay. I will release more. Your posture position is good. Okay. How about this? Ah, oh, stay, stay. A little bit stay and dive. By then, the uh, posture place. Okay. Check trajectory, but I think the still and dive right now. Okay, I release the much. I think the set of uh, puncture is good. Now it would be better. Let's check again the trajectory. Is it better? Yeah, better than before. Mm. But uh, still, still, I'm the guy the posture, please. Still, you need more release. Okay. But yeah. please move it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think you can use the end of reader again. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Is it better, better than now? before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The anterior post is good. Uh, the, the medial position is good. Uh, the, the problem we end up with uh, solved. Okay, let's uh, check the trajectory right the, here. Uh, shall we check the trajectory again? Uh -huh. Okay. What do you okay, think good, about good, this yeah. angle? Yeah, I think it is, looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I will open. Let's check uh, the down. orientation. Clear. 
And can you please show the 3D yeah. view to check the unfunctive view with the club? Yeah, but angle. A, cl yeah. a counterclockwise rotation, please. Okay, from here. But uh, you can uh, move uh, the clip uh, more commercial region. Okay, good, good. Looks good, looks good. Yeah, yeah, we are like, approaching uh, the like commercial region. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So around 11 to 5? Yeah, yeah uh, but uh, more counterclockwise, is, please. Yeah. More counterclockwise. Now it's 10, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about? Or that's it, that's it, okay. 10 o'clock? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think okay, looks good, looks good. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, angle yeah. of the clip. Right here. Yeah. In the commissioner MR or my track clip, the mix of angulation is a, a always difficult problem to me. Let's take uh, what would be the best angle. And another big problem is to make a good echo image with the perpendicular mm. view. Yeah, especially at, in, at A2P2 is very easy. Let's have a group of check is, right, is right here. Yeah. That thing would you prefer to reduce your, uh, your TE the angle? Posture, please. The panel yeah. suggested to decrease the TE angle for yes, the commercial from view. 50 yeah. to probably 30, that would, would be. Yeah. I think that would be helpful. Okay. See, where is the clip? Oh, right here. <laughs> oh, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> I find you. <laughs> it is the oh, orientation in commercial region is always difficult. Yeah. Let's check a 3D image again. Yes, can you please? I think the, uh, the clip may be rotated from the, yeah, yeah. Mm. as expected. I see it yeah. rotated a lot. Mm -hmm. So I will move the position. How about this angle? Oh, okay. Let me check mm -hmm. the 2D image again. And we should check the trajectory again. Mm -hmm. Right here. Trajectory, I'm going to go I will check the trajectory again, and we'll check the angle, perpendicular angle again. I think we are now, we moved too much. How about this trajectory? Yeah, that's good. That's mm. good. You like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then let's check the 3D again at okay. this position. How about this angle? Uh, I like it. Okay. If you like it? Yeah. Oh, let's go ahead. <laughs> oh, grip, I will check the gripper. Okay. The quick view is a little bit difficult. Yeah, at the very uh, this from here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 To, to, to find the grasping view, so single, uh, single plane should be work. Mm. First, yeah. You, yeah, you should find the. We try single plane and then find the both yeah, uh, the mean, angle, uh, both, okay, both angles equal. Okay, we are trying single plane. Mm. Okay, uh, let's have a group check right here. Okay. Okay, mm. and here. Anterior grip is working yeah. well. Yeah. How about the posterior one? Posterior right here. Okay. Posterior okay. Grip uh, uh, we yeah. uh, working clearly well. identified the grip function, anterior and posterior. Let's move to a uh, biplane image again from this view. Okay. Okay. I will go in. How about this angle? I like it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm, it's okay. good. I can't see it. Yeah, it's good. Okay, good. Position is very good. I open it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, very good. Very good. 
Mm. I think the eclipse is a little bit rotated. Ah, yeah, let's take a 3D yeah. Yeah, right here. Let me check. Oh, is it okay? Okay. Yeah, but slightly more central. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will move more media mm -hmm. uh, with your guidance. Oh, the refresh our video on. How about here? Shall we move more media? Uh, let's check uh, 3D again. Mm -hmm. I think that you can uh, go more, yeah, a little bit. Uh, How about the angulation? Uh, slightly rotate. Yeah, clockwise clock rotation. rotation. You want yeah. too much rotated yeah. to the yeah. clockwise counter -clock rotation place. Counter -clock, yeah. I will clockwise a rotation, little bit yeah. rotate it clockwise, but it's very dangerous yeah. in the media commissure. So I will rotate a little bit. And oh, really? Please remember that we are going clockwise. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move yeah. to the uh, biplane image again okay. in this view. Oh, wow. I rotated it a little bit. Okay. How about the image? Okay. The uh, metal yeah. lateral position is good, but you can. Right here, the anterior is on. Yeah. And the posterior oh, we still is can, uh, on. We still cannot okay. see the bosom clearly. Yeah, yeah, but uh, mm. yeah, yeah, we can, you can yeah. see, uh, we yeah. have to see separately in this view. Yeah, yeah you can, we can clearly see posteriorly plate is on and anteriorly plate is on, right? Yeah. Okay, you, you can try to reduce your angle, given that you use uh, yeah, 60 to 65 angle, degree for a 2 2 but for a medial. You could... Yeah, Dr. Bang? Yeah. Okay. Maybe 40 we can, we something. Can right here. Okay. Okay, yes. anterior is on. Please grip her down yeah, right here. Can you please show the uh, 3D, the, 3D, yeah, rotation yeah. Uh, and color, 3D and color. Yeah. yeah. Shall I move more medially? Uh, I, I think that that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can check uh, 3D right here. For commissional region. Okay, do you satisfy with this position? But we are, uh, we plan to use it to clip. Yeah. Yeah. But we can, we cannot go further from okay. this uh, point. Yeah. How about the anterior reflex? How about the making some different angle? Yeah, anterior yeah. position is, I think. So. Okay. But I think that the reflex is, uh, Upon the gripper, let's check it again. The okay. posterior position is good, mm. but anterior is, is problematic right now. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anterior is uh, upon. Uh, yeah. I see, and it's cave. Okay, yeah. Mm. How about this? Gripper oh. is uh, beneath the, uh, the leaflet. Uh, still, leaflet mm. is. Do you want to in oh. grasp one at a time? No, grasp. I want to grasp them. Oh, you want to grasp them both? Mm. Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. How about oh. this? Hmm. Until the, uh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Until the flat is above the plate. Very hmm. hard to grasp uh, from yeah. until the flat. Let's see. Can you please show another angle? Because I think that we are now looking at the different angle. But the poster is on. The mm -hmm. problem is until it's not uh, on yet. Okay. Yeah, please looking at. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think that until it's on. Okay? Oh, yeah. Right here. <laughs> Independent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 저를 조금만 그, 그 각도를 돌려봐 주시면 제가 한번 봐 드릴 겁니다. Oh, Antrim is not on yet. Mm. Yeah, outside the griffer, as you can see here. Let's take the orientation of it <laughs> at this moment. Yeah, that's right. It's a very important step to check again. Yeah, it will be rotated, yeah. I think. So in this case, imaging is very uh, crucial. 
Yeah, it's very challenging. Yeah, it's very challenging. Not easy out there. Orientation looks good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay, I will try again. Yeah. Clip is look uh, deviated to slightly posture, so I would like to suggest. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, yeah, Doctor yeah, Hans, yeah. comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my. Deep in the ocean, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just a tough view. Yeah. Uh, it's. Okay, it's on. Uh, the problem is uh, still anterior. It's very hard to uh, on the anterior flat. Yeah, probably need oh, right to here, find right the right suitable question. Anterior main portion of anterior. Mm. Oh yeah, I, I I think that I would not be able to do it with the XCW. <laughs> 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 yeah, I agree. Uh, <laughs> It's very challenging to me. Yeah. Okay. The problem is that I cannot mm. see clearly the clip. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, I see here. Yeah. Okay. okay. We have to see it separately. Mm. Actually, yeah. and posterior. Yeah. Yeah. Can you please show me the posterior first? Okay. Posterior is right here. Okay. A little bit opening. I will this place. Hmm. And how about the anterior leaflet? Hmm. Uh, okay, anterior hmm. is here. Would you want to try a single? Grasping yeah, single plane. Yeah, mm. good idea. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be better. Yeah. Single plane is better wow. for this patient. Okay. Okay. Dr. Gang, can you yeah. please see the anterior flat right here? What do you think? Is the anterior flat over the gripper or not? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet yeah. Can we catch it? No, I, I don't think so. No. No, not on. Not no. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, one more try. One more try. Not in a good place. Oh, yeah, this image is good. Please capture the anterior flat. <laughs> <That should be. laughs> uh, I think that the go out and I think you can uh, move again. more okay. anteriorly from this yeah. uh, at this moment. Uh, what about uh, a little bit clockwise rotation in the 3D images? Sometimes uh, uh, the guide, uh, clip uh, is toward to anterior if you uh, clockwise yeah, rotation. Yeah, but, uh, close uh, with uh, I understand what Dr. Han is meaning. Oh, too much rotation, I think. Yeah, yeah mm. Dr. Han, let's check the orientation in this view. This is a very crucial mm. step. Yes, I, I, I agree. Yeah, please, uh, yeah, yeah, that's why. Uh, you were too counterclockwise. Yeah. yeah, please, clockwise rotate. Please. Yes. That's why I could not make a good place for the anterior leaf play. Okay. I, I would better see here. Uh, but do be the posture dive in this view? Yes. Too, too this? much clockwise rotation. Yeah. Slightly okay. counter rotate. Clockwise, please. Now okay. you are. You yeah, look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah looks good. Let's try the single plane image as uh, before. Yeah, yeah, this is the critical image point for anterior flat. Please, grip us down. Please, grip us down, please. Can you please show? Yeah, yeah anterior, anterior, anterior. Yeah. anterior. I think anterior will... It does not work. Mm. Oh, it has a... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, let's check the posture, please. Yeah. Yeah, posture is here. Hmm. Man. Yeah, it's very challenging. I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, I cannot see. Yeah, the grip is, uh, yeah, the clip is not in the gripper. I pull back the gripper. Mm. And mm. can you please yeah. show more clearly? Oh, the uh, clip. Uh. Yeah, but the, uh, I think the leaflet is in. 
There, yeah, please uh, close the clip slightly. Okay, here. I push it down the grip hole and close a little bit. Can you see the anterior leaflet? Is it in or out? Yeah, not in. I don't, I don't think the anterior please. leaflet is in. I don't think so. Yeah, anterior is hmm. not in. Please check this image. tricky when you can't see it so well. I just, uh, is there any possibility of uh, stalking in the left flat yeah. in the shaft uh, of the clip? Uh, how about uh, retreat everything? Yeah. Uh, and mm. try again. Mm. I think that there is a chance of uh, stalking. And it's uh, the reason why the anterior reflet is not on. Yes, I try to go out. Okay. Okay. Let's try again uh, from, came out. from the beginning. Okay. Okay. We are now in the safe position. It's not stuck now. And let's try again. Okay. With a more safe angle. Hmm. Okay. I will make more or a little bit more M. Mm, yeah, but I think trajectory is good. Trajectory, we check. Heading a little bit medially. Yeah, so slightly dive, yeah, at this long. This How about this? That would be better. Yeah, better than but still M dive. Okay, better than before. Okay, I will open the clip and please show the 3D. Okay. At this situation, at this position, I will move medially like this. Mm. Our rotation looks good. Mm -hmm. But you can uh, move the clip more commissioner reason. But let's move it uh, after uh, putting the clip uh, okay. in the RV. Yeah. We have to check it. Would, you, would you like to identify the, the shootable grass view before dive, before mm -hmm. diving into yeah. RV? Okay. Pardon? I couldn't hear you. I, I just wonder, would you would you prefer to uh, before diving into LV? Would you you may uh, to identify the shootable uh, grasping view before dive? Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, before dive, uh, identify yeah, the grasping yeah, view. This, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's very helpful. Right yeah. Okay. Seventy-four good. degree. Okay. Anterior, posterior place walking well. And this would be a good angle for yeah. grasping. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very unusual angle. But then I will go in. Mm. Okay. Let's. Can you please show the biplane, and I will go in, and let's go to the grasping angle. That's very practical opinion. Thank you so much. Okay. I move forward. The valve. Okay. And open. And can you please show the Single grasping plane. angle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's check uh, first. It, it is a little bit rotated. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, not much rotated. Mm. Looks good. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go to check, the uh, grasping angle. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we are near the commissioner. Mm -hmm. This is the angle we... Uh, it was 72, maybe? Uh -huh. yeah. 75. Mm. 75. Uh. Okay, yeah. This angle is that Dr. Kubo told us. <laughs> mm. but catching the anterior. Posterior. Mm. Oh, okay, anterior is... How about the posterior? Posterior is here. Okay, posterior more and anterior mm. more. 
Is it Prince mm. show 3D? Two? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Simultaneous mm. viewing of the anterior and posterior replay. Ah. The rotation looks good. Okay. Looks good. Uh, okay. Mm. 74. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, anterior is here. Anterior. Yeah. anterior. Yeah. It is hot. Oh, not much. Oh, Let's try, try okay. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Better than before. And is the anterior replace talk? Ah, uh, it seems like. Why, why, why don't you open more clip? Yeah. Yeah. Slightly, yeah. So, uh, what about. Uh, yeah, been yeah, yeah, yeah. The anterior replace is tough in uh -huh. the chapter, as you oh. can see uh, here. What about heart rate? Heart rate is uh, so fast, so... Uh, 100. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can use as more as more. Natural reflex is stuck here. Yeah, uh, you I think <laughs> I, you I'm looking at the stocking anterior reflex. Yeah. Dr. Kim and Gang, you can use beta blocker to lower heart rate and the procedure may be easier. Yeah, we're now. trying with as more, but it doesn't work well. <laughs> I think the reason for uh, rapid heart rate is uh, the severe MR, a limitation yeah, for the stroke volume. Still stop or release? Stop. Uh, oh, it's okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. It's, okay, now it's released. Yeah, now, oh, now it's good. And yeah, I slightly go. close the clip, too flat. Sli yeah, yeah. Okay. slice close, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Go in. Uh, how about the posterior reflex? Is posterior, it cut? Yeah, not done yet. No, posterior. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is good, but the problem is. Uh, press uh, report down again. Oh, posterior is inserted, but the problem. Anterior is not. Yeah, anterior mm -hmm. is not yet. Go more. Oh, mm. yes. The tip yeah, is that's cut. It, that's it. Tip is in, in, in the grip. Yeah, yeah we, we can uh, cross the clip. Isn't from it too short? Okay, mm, yeah, try. But, Just mm. 60 degree. Uh -huh. uh, visualizing the gripper mm. and the replay is very difficult. I think now you go to uh, anterior, but uh, posterior not here. Yeah, yeah, anterior. Because, uh, you, um, uh, yeah, press open yeah. the clip line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The both lips is not on. Mm. Oh, okay. The and orientation is good. Yes. Let's, trace on. Let's go again. When I say. Oh, okay. Better than uh, good. Report down. Good, 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 good. The post is in. How about oh, the for entry is in. Yes. Okay. C cross the clip. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Sixty degree. Yeah. Now. Uh -uh. Gently push the clip. Yeah. No. The 60 degree closed. I see the posterior leaflet is uh, flipped out. And the uh, so posterior leaflet under the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree. Let's, Let's try, try again. again. And the uh, anterior leaflet, uh, yeah, the posterior leaflet, uh, the posterior, yeah, yeah, okay, the arm is, uh, the posterior, go more. Please, uh, close the clip slightly, at, yeah, at this moment, yeah, okay, okay, right here, you can move the clip more anteriorly, but mm. also is sufficient, but yeah, right, right okay, here, I'll move a little bit, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, yes, right here, right here, right here. Okay, posture is on. The problem is anterior. Anterior is not. Not? Yes. Not in? No. Oh, yeah, but already in. Okay, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the clip is open. I think now you got the both with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please close the clip. Finally. Now we are in the 60 degree. Oh, yeah. The best thing. I, I think I, anterior tried. leaflet is in, but it, this is not exactly what you yeah, want. Yeah, but we had, okay. mm. because uh, uh, yeah, the, this this anterior leaflet is uh, like medial A two, I think. So yeah, there's not a three. So we tried another clip, but uh, just uh, next. Okay. The, the, so 
Okay, Can you please show the 3D or other image? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did not close the clip mm. fully. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Full cons, please. I'll close. Let's try uh, 75. Okay, fully close. Mm, much reduced. Okay. But how about the anterior replay? Is it mm. stable? Right here. Mm. I think there, we, we, we did the best at grasping. Uh, some, <laughs> because of the, the residue or the yeah, polar yeah, segment. But we have to yeah. put the second clip and mm. just uh, next to the first clip. I, I think the anterior uh, insertion is good. But after deploy, I think the stability uh, would be a problem. Yeah. Uh, for this patient, we have the, the second clip. Mm -hmm. I want to ask the experienced panels that always we see that the clip is now good, MR is low, uh, very mild, but after deploying, sometimes it changes. Uh, do you have any your tips and tricks for expecting and the On several such after a deploy? Lizard? Yeah. Let's check. I don't think you can guess. <laughs> I think yeah. this is this yeah, is one of the things you just uh, have to do. Was, uh, disappear yeah. in right up a primary bay. So you have no so no reversals. That's good. Yeah. The, uh, so that's that's the reason why trajectory is very important. Yeah. Most yeah, of but case, yeah. The single plane but, trial is yeah. very important for yeah. this patient, especially for commissural region, as Dr. Gubo said. Okay. How about the, the stability and MR reduction? The primary venous flow reversal shows the better. Mm -hmm. And but the dynamics? problem is uh, there is a yeah. residual porous in 2D image. Eh? That's yeah. the reason why we have to put the second clip. Yeah. Second Would, you clip like to yeah. Hmm? Oh, Would you like to check the yeah. Would you like to check the residual MR in uh, by by view? Yeah. 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 Okay. The stand up But commercial. you can clearly see residual porous right here. Okay. Oops. This is residual porous, and the yeah. color shows. It's greater than my MR. Yeah, just so, close uh, to the just uh, lateral to the first clip. You uh -huh. mean? Yeah. Yes. Let's take the uh, residual products. You just Can you show us the three D and three D color. Yeah, wait a minute. But the because uh, 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 we don't know. Say the five centimeter. We don't know that the uh, residual products is a uh, uh, medial or lateral to the clip. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah, let's check the let's check a 3D. The 3D. Okay, yeah. I agree. That will be very helpful. To identify the where is the pizza originate. Yeah. The medial portion, okay? Mm. Uh, just lateral to the first clip, you mean? Mm, just the uh yeah. Just the water, okay. Then adding mm -hmm. one more clip, to yeah, close yeah, yeah. to the first clip would be, would it would, would minimize the residual MR. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Which clip is uh, better for this patient, XT or XTW? What about mitral valve pressure gradient? I think the let me check, but uh, it seems like less than two. I bet. Mm. <laughs> Please show uh, the color flow. Yes. No flow acceleration. Yeah. Actually, the clip is uh, uh, on the just a uh, very medial position, so I think uh, mm -hmm. it usually do not increase the um, uh, gradient yeah, in this case. So that's I what, think uh, you can do that here yeah, on the, another clip if you want. But I think uh, I, I would like to recommend another clip to stabilize the entry proaptic position in this case. So any any recommendation for the XT panelist? Or yeah. CW or NTW or something. I think for me, I would like a wider clip. <laughs> you want a wider clip? How about yeah. XTW? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to implant XTW for a second clip. Yeah, I also prefer the long um, a clip that can also reduce the central MR. Yeah, yeah I agree. Okay. Okay, two. 
Yeah. Yeah. Flash latency is low enough. Then I will release the first clip. Let's and we prepare in. for the second clip. And with XDW, it was uh, actually it was an original plan okay. when applying the procedure before live. Dr. Gang, close yeah. the clip again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Check uh, in. I close. Perfect. Yeah. Formally yeah. closed. Yes. Okay. Let's try second clip. Please okay. deploy. XTW. XTW. Yeah. XTW. Okay. Then I will release the first clip. I check the final angle with the floral and remove the lung lever, lung lever cap, and the Stability plastic parkings. And we, I'm removing the wire. The first clip check on me. Okay, 진행하세요. check the final angle. Okay, it's stable. And really this. Open. Okay. Okay, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 쌤, 제가 하겠습니다. 에코 봐주십시오. 보고 있어요. 네, 그래서 액트리터 노, 브리퍼. Can we see floral? Yeah. yeah, can you see? Okay. okay. Like can you see the floral? floral? No, we don't have it. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I will show you. I saved. It's always good to see. We just see the echo. We don't see a floral screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, really? Floral again, please. Mm -hmm. Show the floral again. Mm -hmm. I just released. I just released. Yeah. Yeah. And this the, is now the degree of MR increased. Yeah. It's yeah. Like we have the wide clip right here. Uh, where is the the MR from? The uh, lateral part of the uh, clip. Just uh, as I can mention before, I didn't mention before the first segment is remaining uh, at this moment. Hmm. Let's check uh, here. We can put a wide XCW clip yeah. here, and I think the MR will be much improved. Yeah. Can you please show the 3D and 3D with the color? Okay. Prepare. Prepare. I think that the first clip is well placed at the commissure, mm -hmm. and we need more clip to close all the wide. Widely the perhaps segment with the wider one, and I'm preparing the XW. And let's check the pressure. Okay. At first, the at the first the the LA pressure peak was the 35, and the mean was 20. And now you can see the pressure curve. Can you please show the pressure curve? Uh, Dr. Gang, first clip is very unstable. Yeah, yeah we have to do the second clip. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think you, you have to hurry up. <laughs> yeah, please show the pressure curve. Yeah, if we could see the hemodynamics, that would be great. We only see the echo yeah. in the floral right now. Okay. Can see the hemodynamics? No. And at first, the, the, there was a dominant V wave with the thick pressure. Am I much increased? Uh, yeah. before different month. Okay. Oh, can you sh can you show us the pressure curve? We don't yeah, don't see. Yeah, we don't see. Pressure curve 좀 보여 주세요. 지금. Okay. Are they unable to show Always. it? They can't show it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. During live case, so preparing the second clip. Don't see it though. So it's prob problematic. Yeah. Okay. We see pressure, but not not left atrial pressure. This is the LA pressure now. Uh -huh. The LA pressure peak is 14, and mean is 10. Can, can you show the, us? Can you show us? We don't see it. We don't, yeah. see, we don't see There is it. no LA pressure. We've seen the echo. In the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, PD, please. Yeah. 
So the only pressures we see, maybe there's another screen. This is just arterial pressure. We're just looking at arterial oh, pressure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will show you soon. Mm -hmm. Our team is working to show you. Oh, okay. Thank code. you. No, we appreciate it. Yeah. Now you can do that, as you can see. Uh, now we just have two fluoro screens. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm so They're having sorry. trouble. They're having trouble. That's okay. Yeah. We want you to you, you keep working because we're yeah. about out of time yeah. here for the this transmission, and so we will probably need to break off and switch over to the uh, Taver cases. But we can oh, maybe okay. we can come back to you after you have had a chance to uh, place your second clip. Oh, thank you okay. so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try my best yeah. to overcome yeah. this situation. This is a challenging case, so we will let you uh, yeah. let you work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's very great you. effort, yeah, to fi to finalize will, this case, yeah. Will, yeah. Thank, thank you so you. much. I will come back soon. Okay, well, thank you very much for an instructive case. The uh, And so we are now uh, ready for the final uh, session of the day uh, with more Taver for Challenging Cases. So if I could invite the uh, next discussion panel uh, to come up. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who was... Yeah. Uh, here today, both live and uh, virtual.